Hello, my name is Lee Williams, and I'm going to offer you my report from the football match last night between Jiang Su Suning and Tian Jin Taylor. Um, the match result was 3 2 in the end. Um, the quick caption review of the scoreline, um, just quickly, was to say that it the scoreline suggests that it was closer than it actually was. Um, the overarching themes were the fact that Jiang Su, in very large parts of the game, were completely comfortable. Um, but their Achilles heel was the fact that, despite all of their comfort, they kept giving away very very sloppy goals and they didn't end it as a contest I mean there were many times when me and me and my friends who watched it thought that it was completely over and <laughs> I, I had to watch the second Tianjin goal uh, on highlights because we left early because we thought it was over and so we left uh, um, in the 88th minute um, obviously Tianjin scored after that so that's the quick capsule review was that Jiang Su should have been more comfortable than the scoreline suggests. But let's get let's get into it. Let's do the half by half analysis. So the first half, all Jiang Su. Uh, Tianjin offered nothing, um, particularly the first twenty minutes. Uh, Ada was grossly wasteful. Actually, I mean, he had a header. He had a couple of pullbacks that went to him. I think there were a couple of works. Maybe one of them went to Ada. I think one of them ended up at the feet of Teixeira. But the first 20 minutes, Jansi, Jiangsu were all over them. They had multiple chances, um, two two pullbacks, um, and then there were two two or three crosses that come in from the left side. And the, the, the crossing from the left side was terrible. I mean, um, the first cross uh, was out it was high and it was over the bar. Um, I mean, this is my first CSL game that I've watched and I've heard and read that the standard is poor and the very first cross from the very first minute or so, yeah, the, the quality was awful. I mean, a Cardiff fan, I've watched lower league football all my life and even Cardiff in Division 2 was better standard than what some of what we witnessed <laughs> last night um but yeah the first 20 minutes all jank suit um i think tianjin had one shot from outside the box but it never looked like it was going to trouble the goalie um and they offered nothing tianjin offered, offered nothing uh jank were really wasteful particularly ada um, then the first, the me next notable moment came in the 23rd minute. Um, it was the first yellow of the game. Uh, Jeng got yellowed. Um, I thought he had elbowed the guy, but from looking at the highlights, it looks like he kicked out at him after, or well, for no good reason, the ball was long gone. He passed it on. Um, and I knew at the moment, as soon as that first yellow came out, I was like, this is important. And obviously it turns out that he would go on later to get a second yellow and would get sent off. Um, but that was all that really was noted, noted and notable for the first half of the first half. Um, it was all Jiangsu. The, the, only, the only time Tianjin came into Jiangsu's half was when... Jiangsu passed it back into their own half um, in the 32nd minute, 33rd minute there was a comical back pass where the goalie kind of I think I think it was Paletta he, he made life really difficult for his own goalie um, I mean at that point my theory was that Jiangsu were tiring so they kind of it was the ball was in their half more, um, their passing was becoming sloppy um, it they were very comfortable, almost too comfortable. And this was the this was the point. They were so comfortable that I think that maybe they were tired from attacking so much. Um, but I mean, the recurring theme was that all of the attacks were coming from the left, uh, from Jiangsu, and 
they were of a poor standard. Um, most of the balls flew over or flew out of the pitch. Um, and even when they weren't actually that bad, you then had Ada, who was wasteful. I mean, I'm a bit of a of a half a mind about it because sometimes you have commentators that say, you know, they're busy. I mean, Ada would have been described as putting himself about and you've got to miss the chances to actually score chances or you've got to... If you're missing chances, it shows that you're having chances and you're at least you're in the game. But the standard of his... The standard of the, the defence he was playing against was poor. So uh, he had... By my reckoning, he had two... Half chances that, you know, okay, if you miss them, you miss them. He had two decent chances. I mean, he could have had, I mean, particularly when you got to the 45th minute with the, the share at goal. I mean, Janks could have gone, gone in three. It would have been over as a contest. Uh, as it went in, it was only 1-0. And the defending from the goal was, com once again, it's comical. It was, it was, it was bizarre. I mean, like, once again, I, I, I knew that it was a bizarre goal to watch it live. I had to watch it over and over and over again on the highlights to actually see. I made it three times that <laughs> the Tianjin players miskicked or accidentally hooked it. Trying to clear it forward, the ball ended further back. And, I mean, it was such a scrappy goal to share it, put it in in the end with a kind of like a toe poke. <laughs> The the first defender kind of sliced it and it went back and then another player kind of kicked it forward and share it. He didn't know anything about it. He had a go and then then you had the goalie kind of clearing it. He got it. He got a touch on it and stopping the to share an unknown attempt to go and pass him. But then it went back to to share who then kind of knowingly toe poked it in. So it was one nil at half time and completely deserved. The travesty was obviously that it wasn't more than that. So then we got to the second half, right? The second half. The second half, it was, it almost looked like nothing had happened. I mean, like the, the players came out and it, it this was the, this was the overarching theme for Jiangsu was that they almost were the victim of how comfortable they were. So because they were so comfortable, they thought that they didn't have to even try, put any effort in it at all. And even though they were one nil up and they were all over the first half, the second half, they were kind of useless in, um, particularly the beginning. Um, we get to the 49th minute and the aforementioned uh, Jeng, he ends up with his second Yellow, um, bad foul again. I mean, I, I they were both yellow cards, and he deserved his his red for them. Um, so obviously, forty nine minutes, forty minutes left to play. We've got ten men. Then, once again, at the time, there's me thinking, there you go, no problem, game's over. And so, for the next ten minutes, they really struggled. There was nothing much going forward from Jiangsu. They looked like they had kind of, they had kind of packed it up and thought that's the end. I thought that was the end. Um, all that was left to play was 40 minutes of a football match where the outcome was assured. Um, it got to the 59th minute and that's when the penalty came. Um, it looked like it was a penalty to me. Um, after watching it again on the highlights, it looks like a penalty. Um, not a penalty that we would see in I'm used to watching English football um, it looked like he was tripped but it it was given and to be fair to him um, Ada put it in the corner uh, the goalie went the right way but it, it was a good penalty uh, so that's 2-0 two, two once again Finished, done, contest. Um, and then then it looked like Jiangsu were finally at the races. They were finally going to tear Tianjin a new one. <laughs> They've been threatening to do it all game. 
Tianjin had offered nothing in the first half. They went down to 10 men and then they seemed to be up for it at that point. And then they went 2-0 down and and then you thought, okay, um, three minutes after they scored the penalty, um, Teixeira went through. The classy chip over the goalie, but the offside flag was raised. Um, Teixeira, I mean, we we were discussing, me and, me and my friends who were watching the game, we were discussing the fact that Teixeira, I think he was playing as a number 10 or, or a deep line midfielder coming come forward. And it was shocking. He got he got offside a few times. And I mean, we, we were remarking that from the position that he was coming from, he should not have been getting offside, but he kept getting offside. So he, the goal, the classy finish, but it was offside. Um, and then Adair had a shot from outside the box. Missed it, of course. Um... It was a the one of the better attempts that he had in the evening. Um, the only thing he didn't miss was his penalty, obviously. Um, it was good, but it missed. Um, and then, once again, you're thinking the game's over. It's 2-0, 10 men. 68th minute, <laughs> Paletta and goal. Um, once again, I we were sat at the wrong end for this, so I didn't really see what happened. All I could see was that the ball ended up in the net. After watching the highlights, it was kind of unlucky. I think it comes off of his hand, from what I saw. He, the 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 player, gets it across. Player is like basically he's at maybe two yards from the the court the the line the end of the pitch. His hand kind of swings across, and so the the chip is gonna go back into the circle, and he kind of knocks it behind the goalie and into the goal. Um, it was far more than Tianjin deserved. Um, I say that because they offered nothing. They didn't really seem to have much in the way of going forward. Um, but it was Jiang's mistake. It was unlucky. I, I think he was unlucky. He he didn't mean to handball the ball, or, or he didn't mean to get a touch on it, and. Nine times out of ten, you know, it, it, the, the the amount of contact would have made it go a minuscule amount. But he got just enough that it kind of went in. Um, so we got that back to 2-1. Um, Jang Su, this kind of made a reaction in them. The 69th minute, he had a good chance. Um, either again, I think. He cut, got through, one-on-one -on -one with a goalie. Poor finish. His, his finishing was, was poor for the whole game. Um... So then we get to the 73rd minute. This is when the second penalty. Now, I haven't been to a football match live where VAR has been employed before. So this was my first time. I didn't even know, actually, until um, until it happened. Uh, obviously, presumably all of the goals that had happened up until this point had been reviewed, um, as I think is supposed to be the case with VAR. But what happened was the referee blew, pointed to the spot, the ball went on the spot. Um, and I, I said to the guys who I was with, I was like, this is taking forever. Like, wh why is the referee not blowing? And they correctly pointed out that he had his finger in his ear and he was listening to the fourth official or the uh, VAR official who was telling him, you should review. So obviously, after about a minute, about a minute-ish, he does the sign and he runs over to the to the side of the pitch uh i knew that he was going to give the penalty um and so he did so he ran over he watched it and then whew, penalty obviously um and I, i'm kind of glad because i did not fancy ada to score as the second penalty uh and i think he didn't fancy it after I, I i remarked to the guys i said i i feel sorry for him the guy who's going to take the penalty because obviously or if it would have been the same person because he would have stood there waiting 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 and then var stop and then oh no you got the penalty now go on go and take it so i would not have wanted to take that penalty but obviously to share it did take the penalty he wanted to take the penalty and it was a good penalty he went the same side as ada had gone before the goalie once again went the, the right way same side again before as before uh the only issue was uh, Ada went low to Shara went high 3-1 there you go game over that's what I thought um 
So nothing much happened actually until we got to the 87th minute and we thought, okay, well, the game's over, it's 3-1. We're going to go and get the Metro before all of the rest of the people in the stadium go and get the Metro. And so we left, um, obviously, to our detriment. So that was the first half and the second half. So um, next, I'll refer back to what I watched on YouTube to see the final goal. So then, then the final tangent goal. Um, it was the best goal of the game, to be fair. Um, Paletta overcommitted. Um, I think that was his problem for the whole game, really, was he <laughs> kept overcommitting to things, costing his team, um, costing his team goals. Um, but to be fair to Jonathan, he he showed some pace. I mean, Paletta's aging now anyway, but he showed pace. He got through. I mean, he ran basically the whole of the... He ran basically the whole of the the half on his own and slotted past the goalie. Um, turned out to be nothing but a consolation anyway. And, and it was more than they deserved. So the overarching themes then for the game was, as I said, um, Jiang Su being comfortable, but being so sloppy that they nearly lost. They did all of the work and then let the you know left <laughs> they built massive huge walls and then they left the back door they did mass every time they seemed to be so comfortable that i can't believe that the score ended up 3-2 i mean i predicted before the game it would be 3-1 um and i was close <laughs> very close um so the overall that that that's how to take away from i mean jang su finished what fifth last season and Taylor finished just above the relegation, from what I understand. So it, it seemed to go the way it should have gone. Um, I don't exactly know the huge, the, the standard, how good the standard of the other clubs in the league are. But if they're better than that, I mean, they, they, they're they more consistent than that. If they're stronger at holding their nerve than that, then Jones, who haven't got a hope of getting any higher than they did last season. Um but the overall themes, I guess, for Chinese football of my first experience of a live Chinese football match was that the standard was poor. I mean, I always hear it in England, you know, how the they always say that the English game is so for, for, so filled with pace. It's so fast and so fast paced. They say fast pace, fast pace, fast pace. And I never really knew what it meant until I watched the Chinese football and understood that, like, it, it wasn't even that Chinese football was so methodically slow. It was just they didn't they didn't have the capabilities to play faster than they were playing and they tried their best to play as fast as they could i mean i thought fast pace meant that you know it was just kind of like they wanted to slow it down um they tried to play really fast they just couldn't um and the other uh, the other theme is obviously all of the goals in the game today were scored by the foreign players i mean there's only six of the 22 players are allowed to be foreign yeah five goals out of five. I mean, one of them obviously is, is the own goal by Paletta. But even then, the other four goals. And I think, once again, two of them were penalties, so foreigners take the penalties. Yeah, that's fine. But five of guys out of five today were scored by foreigners. Um, so, what does that say <laughs> about. I mean, the contribution from the left side, which was, I believe, the Chinese player, the Chinese winger on the left, the Jiang Su, was poor. Uh, the quality was poor every time. Um, and the second half, when Jiang Su attacked from the right with Teixeira, that's where they had all their joy from. They came from the right and won penalties. The second penalty was a penalty also. I didn't know. I don't think I mentioned that. I think it was the, the goalie took him down. Um, tried to go around him. Goalie took his foot. Penalty. I can't I can't understand why the VAR was used. Um, the VAR, that was my first experience watching VAR in a stadium. Um, once again, you truly have to be there to understand when people say it, it's... It, you you're left feeling lost because you don't know what's going on, and I I never truly got it because every time I've watched VAR, I've been watching on TV where you get to watch the VAR, <laughs> you get to watch the replay over and over until they they make a decision. Whereas for us, it was stood there particularly when I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know that he was. Now from now on, if I watch a when I watch Chinese games, I'll know that you know 
he's listening to the VAR referee. But at the time, I didn't, I wasn't aware that they had VAR in China, and uh, I was just like, why is he still stood there? The pen, you know, the guy's been ready to take the penalty for the last thirty seconds. Like, surely he can just go blow his whistle and ready. But um, it it was, if anything, is odd to have the referee blow for a penalty. Wait and wait and wait, and then tell be told to review the penalty, and then after reviewing the penalty, give the penalty. It. <laughs> Part of me feels kind of like, you know, if you're going to review the penalty, it should be cancelled. I'm, I'm wrong when I say that, and I know that I am, but it just felt a bit kind of flip-floppy, you know? Penalty. Let's review the penalty. Oh, no, it's still a penalty. It's not about the time so much as the kind of, like, have they any idea whether it was a penalty or not? I mean, it made for a unique first match of the Chinese Super League for me. So that was my review. Um, hopefully there'll be many more to come. I'm Lee Williams. Thank you for watching.